All right. Well, oh, please man. introduce yourself to our audience. <laughs> oh my gosh. See, I get all nervous. It's all good. It's like talking to a friend and it's not even uh, that. I think sometimes America paints this picture of how you're supposed to introduce yourself. <clears throat> the best way to be is to be you authentically how you are with those that you love. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're in a safe space. Ain't nobody here. Ain't nobody judging you except for the air. <laughs> <laughs> oh man i know my voice wants to like act up today um <laughs> oh gosh well, so um, you want me to just ask you a couple questions um i mean sure i mean you want me to just just say who i am what i do yeah yeah from? okay please please well i'm rena heber i am the owner and head esthetician of lorena aesthetics i'm born and raised in long beach california and I've been a makeup artist for over eight years. Okay. Now, how did you get into that whole like salon aesthetics industry? Um, you know, it was kind of just a beautiful domino effect. Um, it, you know, it started out with makeup. Um, and then I decided to go to esthetician school to get the appropriate like insurance. Mm -hmm. And I fell in love with everything else about aesthetics. Okay, like for those of us that don't know what that term aesthetics is, could you share more what that is? <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, just I'm a skin specialist, uh, skin therapist, uh, some people call it. Um, so I do everything from hair removal, skin care, um, and I do everything head to toe, regardless of gender. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'll give you my own personal experience with Raina. <laughs> <laughs> She stripped all my hair down, boy. <laughs> <laughs> and she did a great job because I actually thought I was getting a sugar. And it was super easy, super easy, super quick. I really enjoyed how she made me feel while I was there. I felt like I was at home and not really with a stranger in the room. So Aww. thank you for that experience. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. So, um, with the trauma, tell me like um, the experience that you've had and how it relates to like where you are now, like from when you were little or wherever you want to start from. Oh, man. Yeah, I think they're all kind of intertwined at some point in life. Um, you know, the big kind of catalyst that kind of helped me go down the, you know, childhood trauma rabbit hole. Mm. was the uh, separation with my, my kid's father. Mm. And, um, you know, we were together all of our adult life, and it was a very hard, very hard thing to let go of. Um, you know, and, and it was something where, like, I lost myself, you know? I didn't know who I was, what I wanted to do. I had dedicated my whole life to helping his career, and then now I had a child, you know? Um, so it was kind of like a damaged blank slate, <laughs> you know, and, uh, but it was, it was beautiful in the sense that I, I got to really dig deep to find out who, who I am and who I was and where I'm going to go. What do you mean by that damaged blank slate? Oh, well, that's a childhood trauma, you know, so I think any separation, you know, isn't great. It, most of the time, it's not very mutual. Normally, there's a lot of like crappy things that happen. Um, I can relate. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got to say anymore, girl. Yeah, I can relate. Like, I just felt like, <laughs> man, like an antique mirror that just needs to be buffed up, you know, just in a room. Yeah, yeah. Slap like, some basement. paint on here. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Yeah, but I mean, like, therapy saved my life, you know, and it was very different from doing therapy as a teenager, being forced to do it. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely different as, as an adult. And, um, you know, I, I love my therapist. I feel like she's like my best friend. Anytime I'm in my therapy session, it's like talking to one of my girls and, you know, we shoot the shit and, and laugh and, you know, it, it's, it's a good conversation. Um, but I think when I really did uh, EMDR, which, you know, okay, well, I'm going to have to Google <laughs> what it stands for. I, I always forget what it stands for. It's like eye movement. Something well, here, let's, let's pull it up real quick. Okay. Um, 
that way you know for whoever whoever's listening that they're like oh that's what that is emdr therapy right therapy yeah emdr yep so here it says emdr's eye movement desensitate desensitization Mm -hmm. and reprocessing is a fairly new non-traditional type of psychotherapy um it's particularly for treating post-traumatic stress disorder often occurs after experiences such as military combat, physical assault, rape, or car accidents. So walk us through that, my dear, because I haven't <laughs> had that yet, but that's actually something I wanted to uh, look into. Cause yeah, my, absolutely. Yeah, because the therapy that I went through was different, but please, please share your story. Yeah, I mean, I did two and a half years of normal cognitive therapy where you're just talking and you kind of talk yourself through your own epiphanies, a sense, um, mm-hmm. through a guided conversation. Uh, but EMDR, that was, it's a direct way to, you know, target your traumas. But it, it's different in the sense that it heals from your body up. Oh. We have all the trauma stored in different parts of our body, like, um, I know for me, sometimes if I'm like really stressed out, I'll get like a specific pain in my hip, you know, Mm. like, or like my thigh, but it's a trauma response. There's nothing going on there. There's nothing that's actually hurting me, but it's your brain associating a certain uh, memory, behavior, um, emotion with some sort of like physical ailment that we don't normally identify. Mm, okay I think I have an idea because I've done cranial sacral therapy Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it talks about that too like I did that for a couple months where it's exactly how you're saying um each part of our body associates um a part of our life like for Mm -hmm. example in the hips and the thigh area it represents our family if we're having any family issues So it will be an ailment or a feeling of some sort that'll get locked in because of the experience that was caused with the trauma. And it'll lock in there if we don't like move it out in some way through like physical kind of physical therapy. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. It's, um, yeah, yeah. It's very similar to that. It's like, you know, when you have anxiety and you have that tightness in your chest, for me, if I'm having an anxiety attack, I feel like I can't swallow. I've never like drowned or had any kind of allergic reaction to anything. But when I am having anxiety, it's, I feel like I can't catch my breath and I feel like I can't swallow my own spit. You know, it's, it's a very weird sensation. Um, I mean, that's just how it manifests with me. So with EMDR, there's, uh, it's bilateral. So you stimulate both sides of your brain with eye movement. So mm-hmm. usually think about um, a metronome. Okay. You know how it goes side, side, side. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. So she uses her hand and it's really like the craziest rabbit hole. You just sit there. We, we At first we talk about a topic. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like let's say I had a fight with my friends, you know, my girlfriends, we had a disagreement and it really bothered me. Let's find the root of that, you know, and you know, what are three I'm sorry, things. Could you repeat that last part again? I'm sorry. Hen. Mm-hmm. Um, like, let's say I had an argument with one of my girls and, you know, it really, you know, didn't sit right with me. It's finding the root of like, why that didn't mm. sit right with me. What is that triggering? Mm. Um, so it's a very vague situation you start out with. What are some of the things, the negative things that I thought about myself in those moments? And what are things, what are statements to counteract those negative thoughts, right? Mm. So you kind of set, you set the table ahead of time. Um, and you want to go deep, like you want to get riled up, you want to feel the feelings and you really just, your eyes are just glued onto the fingers, you know, you're just going back and forth or some people do tapping. Some people need that more, um, somatic sensation. Yeah. 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 And your brain just goes down this rabbit hole. So you just look for a few seconds and then she'd be like, okay you know, what's going on? What popped in your head? And then it'd be like, oh, well, like this conversation when I was like a teenager and she's like, okay, okay, let's keep going, you know? And then 
you know, you keep going. And then now it's like some crazy situation with like your mom, you know, when you were like five, <laughs> you know, like it's, and it, it could be completely unrelated, you know, oh my God. but your brain creates this natural rabbit hole when you ex- experience and force yourself to feel these emotions. And so you, you go as long as you possibly can. Some people have really physical side effects of like nausea, dizziness. Yeah. Um, some people really do throw up from it um, because it is very physically engaging and as well as your brain, right? Um, so you go for as long as a session or as long as you can. Um, and then at the end, you know, you're riled up. You're feeling your feelings, you know? Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Oh, yeah. Right. And it's like, she's like, okay, well, now let's reprocess that. Let's say to ourselves those statements that we created in the beginning to combat those negative thoughts about ourselves, right? So you're watching the eyes and you're just repeating to yourself out loud or in your head these, like, like a mantra, you know? And then so, and then you stop, you take a deep breath, you do it again. You do it again about like three to four times and your body just like, it's like a whoosh, you know? It's, 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 a, it's an emotional release? Yeah. Wow. Because you build up, you build up. It's like you're working out, but you're just sitting there, you know? It's a like, mental workout. It is insane. Uh, I'm like, yeah. I'm, honestly, like listening to your voice, and you walking me through the steps, like I can mentally see this thing, and I swear, like you were the therapist itself, uh, for oh, real, girl. Yeah, I was just like, because your voice is like super soothing, and it's like, okay, I could see this. I could see, mm-hmm. I could see my eyes rolling back and forth. I could see me having the conversation, going down the rabbit hole. That yeah. is, man, that sounds so freeing. It is. I mean, it. It was. You know, for example, like there was a specific situation um, where, hmm. so I have a thing really quick, just called misophonia. It's really random. It's Miso just what? Where... <laughs> misophonia. Hell yeah, I'm gonna borrow that shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, like where certain noises you know, trigger your amygdala, your like fight, flight, freeze instinct. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, and it's a PTSD response. Okay. Um, so mine is mouth chewing. I mean, mouth chewing is gross for most people. Like if you're chewing loud and, you know, it's not pleasant, but it's for not a me, thing for me, I don't care about that. Yeah, but for me, no, like I I need to run away. Like I cannot be in the room. I've mm. learned over time to, you know, extend my ability to be in those uncomfortable situations. But at some point, um, I do have to leave or just be like, hey, you know, I'm sorry, this is gonna sound weird, but do you mind just like chewing with your mouth closed? I know you probably don't even know you're doing it, but it's just a weird thing for me. Most okay. of my friends know this about me by now because like I have to have that conversation, especially like I love my people and, you know, I want to be around them and, you know, you know, your good friends are going to respect these, these random weird things about you. Right. So anyway, so I was doing the EMDR, we were focusing on this mouth chewing and my brain was taking me here and there from, you know, experiences with my kid's dad to experiences with like friends and my own dad, you know? And my therapist was like, your brain is avoiding this with your mom. And I'm like, oh. (laughs) And then she's like, let's focus on that. And so we start the EMDR and I just start bawling. Just tears just start going. You know, like, like I, it was the weirdest sensation. Like literally somebody just turned on the waterworks. Nothing forced it out. I just thought about this chewing and the association with my mother and it it was this painful but like release at the same time and i i you know my brain really was this rabbit hole Mm. is amazing so it will take you down a dark path to some really fucked up shit you've been through but it also will try to 
provide you a good memory in the process too, to, he, you know, to make yourself happy, to get, yeah. get that dopamine, right? Yeah. So the rabbit hole is not always down, down, down. It could be down, down. Oh, wait, let's remember this happy thing so we don't go too down, <laughs> you know? Okay, so it's providing like a safe um, passage almost. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Your brain, it's, it's, it's amazing. And sometimes it'll block you. Like your brain wants to protect you. Yeah. And um, sometimes you kind of have to acknowledge what it's avoiding, right? Yeah. And um, acknowledge the pain, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, it was, it was amazing. Um, it is still something I have to deal with and process every day, but I, my ability to be around the noise has increased dramatically, especially in the presence of like family and friends. Um, I don't get worked up as much. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it was to the point, like when I was 13, my mom was like going to commit me. Okay. She thought I was going crazy. I was in, I was in the car in the backseat. My grandfather had like a, a cough drop or something. And he was just like, you know, oh, you know, older people, so much spit in their mouth and it's like clanking against their dentures. So all this like stimulus was happening and I'm over in the backseat just sobbing. And I like, I need to get out of this car. Like I can't process, I, I, I was going crazy, right? And my mom really thought I was, you know, going through some sort of psychosis. Wow. Um, and that, that was the very beginning of this PTSD. Um, but what we did find out, you know, just for example, like, the beginnings of this. Um, my dad passed away when I was 13. It was a very long drawn out process and, uh, it was in Arizona. So we had to do a lot of long drives and my mom just had quit smoking. And so she started chewing nicotine gum mm. so during this stressful time in my life, you know, learning, <coughs> you know, different things that my, my dad died for seven minutes. He had a stroke, he's brain dead. You know, he's just like a fucking vegetable, you know, hearing all these things at 13 years old and then thinking about it on this long car ride while you hear this noise constantly, somehow my brain as a PTSD response associated, you know, that much pain and anger and confusion and frustration wow. um, with that noise. I wanted to cry for you. <laughs> I, shit, seriously, I could feel it in the... Um you know how you're explaining it i don't know if it still hits you the same um, um yeah i mean it can it absolutely can um my kid already knows you know it, it was crazy like as a my kid was a baby it didn't bother me but the moment my kid like turned four i like you know his chewing started bothering me and i was like oh my gosh okay let's work on this we'll just call it manners you know <laughs> 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 let's have manners and chew their mouth closed <laughs> wow. and so my kid and his friends they know to you know chew their mouth closed around me it's sad sometimes like where i really would this is why i focus on it in emdr so much is um because it's something so small that has really affected my entire life since i was 13 and i'm 30 now you know it's a long ass time to be dealing with something but um you, you know, it's something that like, I, I couldn't be around my mom cause she still chews nicotine gum. Um, and it has affected our relationship because she doesn't care. I mean, like she knows I'm, I'm like dying on the inside and she's like, ah, go away. And then I'm like, fine, fuck it. <laughs> I'm a <gonna> go, <laughs> you know? And, uh, so it has affected a lot of different relationships in different ways for me. Um, I mean, that's just like a very specific situation, how my trauma has affected my life. Yeah. You know, yeah. it, it looks different for everybody. Yeah, no, I can totally relate to that relationship with your mom, uh, mm -hmm. especially the way that she responded uh, to, you know, how you're telling her you were dying on the inside. <clears throat> and then that only proves to show the state or the condition of the mindset uh, that, you know, she's currently in. I don't mm -hmm. know if she's still in that state frame of mind, but like, <clears throat> you know, like our parents, I think we talked about this before if they haven't received the healing for themselves mm -hmm. they can't pass on any love or to any capacity what healing is absolutely and so, and, and so like kudos to you for oh, doing the you. work for doing the yeah. work like i mean not just for yourself even though in essence it is 
but like you now pave the way for your children and how that you know they'll learn how to respond in s situations like this because that fucking dealing with trauma that fucking shit is fucking work and it is oh, emotional strenuous it's shit. so much easier to put it in the back of your head and forget about it Totally. And just, you know, have toxic <laughs> traits in life. You know, it's so much easier to escape through drugs and alcohol than it is to heal. I just had a conversation with a client today about that. Healing is not easy. It is one of the hardest things you can do because you literally are face to face with your demons and yeah. have to. It's like a Lord of the Rings battle to me, you know, like yeah. <laughs> it's, it's super action packed and there's so many things to fight, but you somehow win. Yeah, yeah. I, but it's interesting because like I was having a conversation uh, the other day on POF. They have like live streams on there. Oh, OK. Yeah. And so you can go in those chat rooms and they'll talk about different topic and, topics and stuff. And one of the guys was on there and he was like, oh, I'm a, I, I was in this chat room and, you know, I've been visiting this lady stream for like a month. And I want to know what she thinks about my presence there. <clears throat> and I thought to myself, oh, so this guy needs some validation. So I asked him and I was like, are you looking for validation? He was like, no, why are you trying to take this conversation <laughs> left? And I'm I like, mean, yeah. <clears throat> and then I said, so why is it important for what she thinks, whether your presence is there or not? And he was like, because I want to know. And I was like, all right, bro, this is how I'm going to say this. <clears throat> if your energy is not acknowledged or appreciated, why are you still there? And he yeah, was, like, he was, oh, yeah. He was yeah. like, oh, okay. I like how you put that. And I'm like, either way, it's the same shit. Yeah. He was like very desperate to feel seen. Yes. And I asked yeah. him that. But, you know, it's going back to that thing about um, it is so much easier to be unconscious and not acknowledge the trauma mm -hmm. versus actually acknowledging it. Because now you have to now that you're given this opportunity to have a conversation with yourself, what are you going to do? Yeah, you can't use it as an excuse or a crutch anymore. <laughs> Yeah. You know, like, oh, yeah, my my whatever parent beat me as a kid, you know, I mean, that's unfortunately very common. But, you yeah. know, like it's it's like, yeah, that happened. What what are you going to do about it? You know, like what can you do now? Yeah. To hug that inner child. But, you know, you can't just be like, oh, I'm an asshole because my parent beat me. No, that's not a good excuse anymore. You know, like people go through so many crazy situations and have to do the work to be better people. Oh, absolutely. Um, one of my biggest things is you are not a victim of your circumstances. There's always a way to overcome, you know, and, and I, that might sound a bit heartless, I guess, but, you know, at the end of the day, like, if you want to be a good person and you want to be successful, what, however that looks like for you, that takes work and you can't, really hold on to these traumas and these negative traits and toxic traits um, and be a successful person in life. People oh, won't yeah. accept you or you'll damage all your relationships. Like, you know. Yes, I totally agree with you. And like, I think as we continue to have these kind of conversations um, and, you know, we continue to upload them onto the media, I mean, onto the internet, it just like it gives more people an opportunity to shuffle and find more resources and more conversations that this is a normal thing that people deal with. And it's oh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's okay. Well, I think there's only like nine minutes left on here. Okay. So, dude, you did such an awesome job. <laughs> you, you're <laughs> fucking you. natural. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm like, I don't know why the fuck you said you had um uh, nervous earlier. I'm like, <laughs> you you fucking flowed in this shit like you've already been like on a radio show and shit like oh, that. I'm like stop. <laughs> nah, bro, you, you you was smooth. Oh you were smooth. I appreciate it. No problem. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um download our conversation. Mm -hmm. I'll send you the full uh clip and then you can break it out how you want. <clears throat> and I'll send you a link on uh, a website called Molly Instagram. 
Okay. And then um, in the Molly Instagram, you can cut it off and trim it on your computer, however you, wherever you want to yeah. uh, like post. Yeah, cut it off at. Yeah, I've never done that before. So um, I'm excited. Yeah, it's super easy, girl. All you got to do is like click on the link, paste it into the Molly Instagram thing, and then I'll download it on your desktop and you can mm. just you know, upload it like how you usually do like a reel or something on Instagram. Wow. How crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, shit, you never know how this is things going to pan out for you. You might just be doing some, you know, some other shit and just like, boom, blow up. And, you know, <laughs> you never know the yeah, opportunities absolutely. they come in different forms. Yes, absolutely. It was a pleasure. Oh. Like, oh, honestly, man. I love this. I think it's crazy. One day we'll talk about how we met modeling. Oh, yeah. Way back when. <laughs> <laughs> now look at us. You know, I know. I know. Boss ass bitches. You know, yeah. that's that's what we are. For real, man. And I'm so thankful, you know, even though the trauma that, you know, we did experience as as youngsters, it definitely like if we didn't experience those spaces, we wouldn't be where we are today absolutely 100 percent. so peace love and light to you and your family and once again i really appreciate your energy in this space oh thank you so much all right you're right have a good night my dear you too bye